Yeah, this year's College Division Award winner is former ECAC Senate Treasurer Roger Crosby. Good evening. On this very special night for ECAC Sida, I want to take a moment to congratulate all the award recipients. Anthony Bill Esposito was a great and courageous man, and for your name to be affiliated with his is a tremendous way for you to begin your professional career. Kevin and Andy, a sincere thank you from all of us in this room. Covering college sports from a media standpoint has become more and more difficult, and your efforts are truly appreciated. Dennis, as you mentioned, one of the perks of receiving the Nevins Award is that you get the vote on it. You'll be amazed at how difficult that is and how proud it will make you. And David Alexander, my friend, I'm thrilled to see your name added to the Marshall Award list. It's very well deserved. And now for the real reason that I'm up here. Everyone in this room is familiar with the dreaded crossover season. It's that time when your football team has its final home game and your basketball coach has scheduled an eight-team tip-off tournament the same day. <laughs> or it's when your lacrosse team opens in 26 degree temperatures the same day you host an NCAA basketball regional. When Paul Sweeney comes up here to accept the 2019 Irving T. Marsh College Division Award, he won't be wearing a crown, but he should be. Because Paul is the king of the crossover, rarely having a season where at least one of Tufts teams is not playing for a national championship. Paul has been responsible for the coverage of 10 national championship teams, 29 individual national champions, and over 50 New England Small College Athletic Conference championship squads. And they were slipping, they only had three in the spring this year. He's been the host SID for countless regular season, conference, and national tournament games. And with Tufts tremendously successful spring sports teams, while other SIDs are taking break after a long year, Paul is quite often busier on Memorial Day weekend than the American Legion Color Guard. The institutions where I worked often played Tufts in many different sports, and I always found Paul to be the consummate professional, responding immediately to any request and providing pre- and post-game responsibilities in an immediate, thorough, balanced, and proactive manner. Several years ago, when I was no longer an on-campus SID, Paul reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in assisting him at Tufts. It was only then that I realized what a truly remarkable job he does at Tufts under less than ideal conditions. Paul has served Tufts University for the past 26 years. He came to Tufts from U.S. Lowell, where he learned the sports information business from 2002 Marshall Award winner Bill Alfred. And Paul himself has served as a mentor, assisting, among others, this year's co workshop chair Craig Kaufman in breaking into the business. Craig says of Paul, Paul is your classic old-fashioned SID who values the written word, but he has also done a tremendous job of adapting to make sure that his coverage of tough student athletes is on the cutting edge. With the barest of resources, Paul has consistently operated one of the most vibrant sports information offices in the area, and he has done it with absolute humility, sincerity, and genuine love of his student athletes, assistants, colleagues, family, and friends." End quote. For over two decades, Paul ran the quintessential one-man shop at Tufts, despite the fact that the jump was sponsored one of the nation's most largest and most successful programs in Division III. Tufts has won national championships in Division III in field hockey, men's soccer, men's lacrosse, and softball during Paul's tenure. And Paul alone has efficiently and effectively promoted each of those teams, both working the games and handling all the result responsibilities. Paul has been asked to complete the Herculean task of promoting Tufts Athletics national champion and national caliber programs with equipment that wouldn't pass muster at Walmart. While the athletic department recently moved into new and modern office space, Paul's equipment for remote sites is barely adequate in most cases and inadequate in some. As technology and sports information has created an ever-growing list of game day responsibilities, Paul has worked tirelessly to successfully incorporate all those things into his already overburdened workload with little personnel or technical assistance from his department. Lauren Epstein is the Tufts softball coach. When she arrived at Tufts as an assistant coach five years ago, she was assigned a secondary responsibility as Paul's assistant, on a part-time basis, of course. Lauren says, 
Not only does Paul run an office that is producing quality content, but he does that by treating everyone equally. The sailing and squash recaps at the end of the day are just as important as the football recap he wrote earlier in the day. Paul writes a preview for the upcoming football game, and he does the same thing for the upcoming track meet. He is dedicated to promoting and covering every student athlete who puts on the brown and blue, and he has been for his entire time at Tufts." End quote. It's not uncommon for Paul to be in his office at 11 o'clock or later on a weekend evening. He treats that day's swim meet with the same zeal and enthusiasm as he does his top five nationally ranked women's basketball team. For years, the Tufts football team had one of the longest losing streaks in the nation, yet every single week, Paul showed up at the New England Football Writers Luncheon to assist in promoting those struggling student athletes and to support their coach. For over a quarter century, Paul has served Tufts University with a dedication and a work ethic that I doubt is matched by any other person at that institution. He has never been offered the personnel help he both requires and deserves. He has not been supported in terms of professional development opportunities, either through encouraged attendance or financial support. Yet despite this, Paul has continued to provide Tufts University with outstanding loyalty and excellent sports information services. Although his body of work speaks for itself, being selected for the Irving Marsh Award validates the amazing job Paul has done at Tufts. As a Marsh Award recipient myself, I candidly say that the list of recipients is greatly enriched by adding Paul Sweeney's name to the roster of those honored with this great award. And in an ECAC side of first tonight, Paul is receiving this award on his birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, 2019 Irving T. Marsh College Division Award recipient, Paul Sweet. That was overwhelming. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. I'll have more to say about Roger in a minute, but what an honor to have one of the legends in our field introducing me. So, uh, also, uh, congratulations to all of the other award winners. It's an honor to be amongst you. I will make this as quick as possible. Number one, the bees are on. Number two, I know the last thing anybody wants is for an SID who just shows up to receive an award to drone on and on about himself, but I will uh, I have a lot of people to thank. I'd like to start by thanking ECAC SIDA. So many of you do so much for this great group, as well as for CoSIDA. I really haven't done a lot of that. So number one, thank you for ignoring that gaping hole in my resume for this award and giving it to me anyways. And number two, thank you for all that you do for those two great groups. So here's my story. I went to the University of New Hampshire, class of 1989. The best thing that happened to me at UNH is that I met Eric McDowell. Eric was the assistant SID at the time under Mike Bruckner, another great guy. I was the sports editor of the student newspaper. This is pre-internet, so I would make the long trek up Main Street to Lund Home Gymnasium to see Eric, collect the press releases. He was always so accommodating. He gave me a great introduction to the type of people that are in this business. And then when I was leaving UNH, to be able to put Eric on my reference list opened so many doors for me. So I'm looking for jobs, I'm sending out resumes. The first two people who call are Roger Crosley and Jim Seavey. Now, they didn't have jobs to offer me, but they took time out of their day to call and talk and give advice, and I've always appreciated that. And I'm blessed to say that both of those dudes have remained friends and mentors to me throughout my career. So then just by dumb luck, uh, the University of Lowell, that's how long ago this was, it was still you Lowell, was starting a sports information internship. This is 1989. I'm from Chelmsford, Massachusetts, which borders Lowell. So I think the fact that I had Eric McDowell on my reference list, and I had this geographic convenience, because I had no sports information experience at the time, I think those things led B.L. Alfred, who was the SID of Lowell back then, to give me an internship. So I met with BL in Buffalo at ECAC side in 1989. And then we met back again in Lowell later in the summer. I know I wasn't BL's first choice for the job because he told me. <laughs> <laughs> I probably wasn't even his second choice for the job, but I got the job and I was able to learn the ins and the outs of the profession from one of the greats. So really, I mean, how lucky have I been? McDowell, 
Crosley, C.V., Alfred. Put Dick Life up there. That's the Mount Rushmore of ECAC side in New England, to me at least. And I was blessed to have all of those guys influence my career. So I loved my time at Lowell. I did 40 years at Lowell making like 30 bucks a month. But I loved it. We had a great group. But it did come time for me to start taking myself seriously. And then again, just like dumb luck, the tough job opens. You know, I had no interest in leaving to Boston. And here's a job in a great school that if I got it, I wouldn't even have to leave the house that I was living in, which was my parents. <laughs> I, I try to be modest and self-deprecating always, hopefully that's coming across, but I will give myself this. I kick ass at the Tufts interview. I can remember driving home thinking that I got the job. And, and I got it, and 26 years later, uh, as Roger mentioned, uh, we've had some amazing moments. Ten Tufts teams have won NCAA championships during my time. Twice that many and more individuals have won championships. Those have all been amazing moments. Uh, I treasure the relationships that I have with some tough people who are legends in their fields, regardless of division. People like Rocky Cazzo, Don Megerly, John Casey, Brandon Smith King, the list goes on. So when I got this award, there wasn't a lot of talk about me being a, uh, a one-man shop, and that was true for 20 years, but it's a hell of a lot better now. Thanks mostly to Lauren Epstein, who Roger mentioned. Epps is a tough graduate who came back as a softball coach. Uh, athletic Communications was her second assignment. I don't know how many schools are still doing the coach slash SID thing, but we do, and EPS has been great. Uh, way too many people at Tufts to, to thank over 26 years, so just a blanket thank you there, especially considering none of them are here tonight. <laughs> and, uh, thank you, Mistak, for the hard work in SIDs and the person that's right there. Special thanks to Craig and Emily for their efforts this week, and Craig for helping to put forth my nomination for this award. Uh, my personal thank yous, just quickly, my dad is here tonight, my real role model. It was cool that in retirement, he worked out in the Tufts football press box, doing the down and distance and those things on the scoreboard. Um, my sister Cheryl is here tonight. I've had some drama in my life over the last 10 years, and she's always been a, a great sounding board for me. Uh, my girlfriend Jen is here tonight. I think we all know that the brunt of the difficulties that this job can cause at times fall most squirrely upon those that we live with. So thank you, Jen, for putting up with me and uh, supporting me. I love you. And, and then my kids, Jack and Jenna. You know, they know nothing but dad being an SID, going off to work on Saturdays, missing their games, and they've just rolled with it. So, um, so I'll conclude by saying that uh, I was shocked to find out I was getting this award. You know, you look at the list of recipients and you don't feel worthy. <laughs> like Tim has said, I'm not sure I am worthy, but I'm not giving it back. And uh, I appreciate all who helped put forth my nomination. Uh, like Roger mentioned, today is actually my 52nd birthday, 